The other day, I got an email from Yes Welder with an opportunity to try out a couple of their machines. And this unit here, the YWT200DC, piqued my interest for a couple of reasons. Yes Welder is known for their price point, and I actually learned about them from my dad, who just runs the crap out of one of their stick welders. He never stops, he's always building something, and the little lunchbox size stick welder is perfect for him. Now, this unit here, the YWT200DC, caught my eye for a couple of reasons. One, this thing lists normally for $599, which is a good price for the options that this machine says it has. But it specifically says one feature that I have been dying to try, and that is the cold TIG function. And for the space that I'm in, the RC car fabrication space, this is something that I think could be really beneficial to me. But I wanna look at everything that it has, everything that it offers, and compare it to some of the machines that I'm used to using. I am not a high-end, full-time fabricator running machines worth thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. I am a hobbyist who started with a $300 TIG, got a, you know, got a $600 TIG, bought an $800, you know, I'm in that space. I'm looking forward to try it. Let's open it up, see what's inside, and then I'm anxious to go get it fired up. Smells like China. That was the most unsatisfying peel ever. So here in the front underneath of the shroud, you've got a digital display. Now, we'll get it plugged in and go through the navigation of that. That side of things, you know, as far as if you're learning to TIG, I am not the person that should teach you technique. There is amazing channels with talented TIG welders that I think are probably better to look through. And I also don't wanna just read the website off to you. If you're that interested, you will absolutely be able to do that. But the main points to take away from this are that it's got high frequency start, which is something that I feel is a must have. For the work, the type of work that I do, especially the fabricating RC cars like you see behind here is often using very thin steels, stainless steels and titaniums. High frequency start is very handy. Uh, it keeps my tungsten cleaner. For an amateur like me, once I went to a machine with high frequency start, I couldn't imagine going back to the lift TIG that I started with. We also have a whole box of accessories here. Comes with an arc welding setup. That's not something that I've ever used on any of my machines. It's just not something that I personally do. We've got our standard clamp on lead. We get two torch setups. And this was interesting to me because one of these torches is for standard TIG welding, just like you would normally think of using or probably or possibly have used in the past. The other one is specifically for that spot welding or the cold TIG that I'm interested in. I don't know why that specifically takes a separate or different type of torch, but I'll do what they say and swap it out. We also get a gas line and important to me is we get a 220 to 110 adapter. I weld on 110. For the size that I'm doing, I'm not pushing enough amperage that I've needed to go to 220. So I find that to be super handy and something that I've utilized on every TIG machine I've owned so far. On the gas hose that's included. However, the regulator is not. So you will need to purchase a regulator separately. Yes Welder has regulators on their website for a very inexpensive price, something that is probably worth picking up while you're making the order. I did make the choice to pick up their regulator to see exactly how it was. Speaking of optional accessories, this machine on the torches that it includes uses the button operation right on the TIG torch. That's pretty standard on many machines, but this machine is compatible with a foot pedal, which is what I prefer now. And Yes Welder sells a foot pedal specifically also for a great price. So I picked that up as well. I believe that I'll be using the foot pedal unless that spot welding just seems to be easier with the push button. Maybe I'll try both, but that's enough here on the bench. I wanna get out into the shop and try and stick some tubes together. All right, out in the shop, I've got the welder just sitting on top of my bench. It's hooked up to my argon bottle up there. I do like the way that that regulator works. It's got thread in bungs on all sides. So uh, no like slip fittings and hose clamps, although it does include it in case that's the uh, 
you know, I guess style of tube that you have going to your welder, whatever it is. Either way, I do uh, so far like that regulator. But here, got the machine plugged in. I do have it plugged in to 110. I have not powered it on yet, but have got all of the connections made. It is a little bit tough to access the uh, the gas set up there, but you know, you just gotta, you're only doing it well, not very often, but if you are switching torches, I guess it's worth noting. Uh, same with the electrode or the, I guess the toggle, whatever you wanna say, that goes to the torch. A little bit hard to get your fingers in there and tighten that collar down onto it. But again, not the end of the world. The cables, like the, uh, I guess this is actually the, the positive side on TIG, nice and flexible. So uh, the clamp itself is pretty inexpensive feeling, but it does have a braided uh, lead on the inside there rather than just like a flat copper piece, which is actually how my other one was and it finally wore out. But this one feels decent enough, I'd say. And again, a nice flexible wire. On the actual torch, it does have the uh, like strain relief or the ball style at the bottom of the actual torch. Now I'm running the WP-9 torch head, and that is specifically the one that's noted for the spot welding. I put the number six ceramic on there and I've ground that tip to a 10 degree angle or a 20 degree inclusive angle. So, um, or sorry, actually 15 degree with a 30 degree, as you'd say, just using a tungsten grinder. But we're gonna power this thing on now. See what we've got in store. Imagine the buttons behind. Yes, on top of the back. Hmm, oh, there it is. Okay, just takes a second to boot. I guess then it says 110 there. Is it sensing sensing the voltage? Pretty nice display. We'll say the shroud is a little a little loose. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of like not a huge deal. But uh, I guess a fan doesn't kick on immediately. You can see the 110 input voltage that I was talking about there. Uh, we've got DC and pulse. I have used Pulse a number of times. Uh, DC is probably what I'm gonna stay on for now because I'm really wanting to use that cold spot. We got stick, high frequency TIG, and lift TIG. I pretty much will always be using high frequency TIG. Torch modes, 2T, 4T, and foot pedal. 2T is what I use when I am using a button style on a torch. So we're gonna start with that before I hook up the uh, foot pedal just to see how this machine would come out of the box. Now, as far as toggling through these, uh, there we go, just a simple push in. So pre-gas flow, you know, if I'm running steel, I may just run half a second, 20. Oh, look at that. Wow, we can go all the way down to five amps for start, which is excellent on our on the size that I'm running. Often that is, tubing like this. This is 3 16 diameter tubing with an 035 wall, regular DOM mild steel. So uh, that five amp startup is excellent. I think my current welder only goes down to a 10. So go back to the start. Uh, let's see. Up, slope up. I, yeah, I don't often use that. Um, Upslope is turned off, so this is, it looks like it's gonna be in seconds, so say, let's just set it for half a second. Right now, I guess this is, again, if I was just doing regular TIG, this is gonna be our peak amperage here. On that tubing that I'm normally using, my peak amperage is usually at 35. Now, I'm usually using a pedal, so I'm guessing that most of the time I'd be closer to that like 25 peak. I'm not usually matting the pedal. So uh, pulse frequency, we don't have it set to pulse, so I'm not gonna be worried about that. And slope down, I'm gonna leave off. Uh, stop amperage, I guess, if we're not using slope, I don't think that this would necessarily apply, but we'll see, turn down to five. And uh, post flow gas, five seconds, I'm good with that. So that would be how I would set it up if I was just doing my normal, normal high frequency TIG type setup, but I want to try this cold spot. So let's see what kind of uh, settings it gives us. 
weld time, 10. Uh, this is in milliseconds, if you saw that. So we're gonna leave it at 10 milliseconds, see what that is. Spot time is off. Oh, I think that is if you wanna go, uh, if you want it to like go weld, then a, a pause, then weld again, in case you wanna hold it in a row and just go across. I'm gonna try and do it manually at first, uh, but we may, we may try that here in a little while. So uh, post gas. I guess that's what we're back at to, five seconds. That seems long for a spot. So let's just back that down to three, just to start. Uh, Pre-gas, um, yeah, half a second, let's, let's start. Peak amperage. Um, I hear that for this type of TIG, you need to go with a higher amperage. So uh, I'm gonna start at 35, as that's what I'm, I'm comfortable with saying. And now we're just back to weld time. So. With that, I, uh, I'm gonna set up a couple of tubes. I'm gonna get them notched and put together, do a little bit of playing around. So I'm going to grab my helmet. I am going to be cautious about how the, uh, the spot welding does with flashing on me. I do run a pretty nice hood. This is a Miller Infinity series. Um, so I'm hoping that it'll keep up with that spot as I paid a lot of money for it. So after practicing on some tubes for, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes, uh, starting to get the hang of it. You know, the settings are much different than I initially set up. I do have it at max amperage for a 110 setup. So that's 110 amps, which is wild. Um, and then my weld time is 80 milliseconds. And then I did end up using the uh, spot time. So that's 0.6 seconds between spots. So if I just hold the button down on the torch, it'll spot every 0.6 seconds. And that was really the only, you know, things that I changed. I just had to, to get a hang of it. What I have found is that the distance of the tungsten to the material is ultra, just ultra important with this setup. You wanna have it absolutely as close as possible and then it really works like a charm and is super consistent. I also tried a couple of other things. So uh, on that top one there, that's just regular spotting all the way across. On the back side, I actually use some 0.035 silicon bronze, or wait, this might be, this might be or 130 second. This is 130 second silicon bronze filler. Um, and that actually flowed in there. So uh, you wanna have the gap as close as possible when spotting. But on tubes, sometimes that's just not the case. Sometimes the notch or the angle isn't perfect. So uh, using that silicon bronze as filler just works great and is not, I mean, really, really easy. So uh, I think that I'm going to really enjoy this machine, if not only for that function, but for the regular, you know, TIG functions as well. I mean, it's got all of the features that I was really hoping that it would have. The feet, I haven't even plugged in the pedal yet. This is just using it as it is. This is gonna be more of a, a long-term review on this one, but already, <laughs> already one that I'm excited to continue using. I also have the Yes Welder 205 on the way, which is a $239 retail unit, which is on sale as well. It's closer to $200. And I'm gonna be using that welder to build a chassis, just showing you how you could do it on the cheap. But 
I feel like I may have to integrate this one more as well because I'm already really digging the benefits. So if you're interested in this, I will put a link below. Uh, they did send me this for free. The link that I have is an affiliate link if you would like to pick one up. If not, no big deal. You can also get them on Amazon. I'm genuinely excited to work this thing through. I'm gonna print up some jigs for some tubing like I do with my other projects and try and put some of this together for real. So looking forward to doing more, but that's gonna do it for this video for now. You'll see more on this thing very soon. So if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe, all the good stuff. Appreciate you guys. See you on the next one.